Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Waytech Red Hair 215mm racing quadcopter. This quadcopter is available in three versions, so you can get a plug and play version that doesn't come with any receiver and you also have two bind and fly options, one with a fly sky receiver and the version that I've got is the FR Sky version that comes with an FR Sky XM Plus receiver. Inside the package we get in two sets of Gemfan 5152 flash propellers, the quadcopter, a TBS Triumph antenna with an RPSMA antenna connector, two cheap battery velcro straps, this 3 pins connector, an 8mm wrench, an anti-skid battery sticker, and these four bags that contain the nuts for the motors along with 6mm M3 screws. Now let's have a look on the quadcopter. First of all on the center we can find the OLC C2 flight tower. The top board is an Omnibus F4 flight controller, it comes pre-flashed with Betaflight 3.2.0 and has a built-in VTX with a selectable output strength of 25, 100, 200, 400 and 600 milliwatts. Unfortunately it does not support smart audio, so in order to configure it you're going to need to use these two buttons that are inconveniently placed on the back and later in this video I'm going to show you how to configure it and also going to measure the output strength of this VTX. On the back we can find also this AM6 antenna connector, which is connected to this RPSMA antenna adapter. The bottom board is a 4-in-1 35A BLLES ESC. And next we've got these motors, these are the Samjuk Shu 2306 2500KV motors. I haven't tested them before, but as far as I know these are pretty good budget friendly motors and each of them cost only $10, so replacing them is going to be pretty cheap. Now even though that this flight tower supports a 6S setup, this motor supports 4S like batteries and maybe if you're going to push them a little bit you can also fly it with a 5S battery. On the front we can find this simple CCD camera, this is the same one that was used with the Furby Dark Max. I have seen it also in other brandless quadcopters and the only thing that is nice about it is that it has a built-in OSD control board which you're probably not going to use anyway. Finally we can find an LED strip on the back and also this FR Sky XM Plus receiver since this is the FR Sky version. As for the frame itself it uses replaceable arms so if one arm breaks you can simply replace it. The arms are being held with these three M3 screws and the thickness is 5mm so this should be pretty durable. In addition the thickness of the bottom plate is 2.9mm and the thickness of the top plate is 1.8mm. The wheelbase of this frame is 215mm and the distance between the back motors and also the front ones is about 14cm and the distance between the back motors to the front ones is about 16.5cm. The weight of the quadcopter including the propellers and the antenna is about 302 grams, so it's a little bit heavier than the Emacs Hawk 5, this is actually the one with the 6 inch arms so the 5 inch version is going to be even lighter. Configuring the VTX is done by using the buttons that are located on the back of the VTX. The top one selects the channel and the band and the bottom one selects the output strength. It is indicated by the LEDs that are located on the front so I'm going to put the table over here so you can match your favorite band and channel. In order to select the channel you will need to short press the top button and in order to select the band you will need to long press it. Short pressing the power select button is going to switch between 25 100, 200, 400 and 600 milliwatt output strength options. As you can see the left LEDs are both off which means that now it is set to 25 milliwatt and the measured output strength is about 20 milliwatts. Now the bottom LED is on so it means that it's set to 100 milliwatt and I'm getting about 40 milliwatts. Now the top LED is on and the bottom is off which means that it's 200 milliwatt and I'm only getting about 66 milliwatts. Now both LEDs are on which means that it's set to 400 milliwatts and I'm only getting about 110 milliwatts. And finally after show pressing it for the last time these LEDs are going to flash rapidly which means that it's set to 600 milliwatts and I'm only getting about 130 milliwatts. So I'm not sure how well this VTX is going to perform and soon I'm going to find out. And by the way, even when the flight controller and the VTX are powered only by the micro USB port when it's connected to the computer, the VTX is still going to be powered on. So make sure to always use an antenna even when you configure it on a bench on Betaflight. 
The next thing that I'm going to do is to go over a bit of flat configuration and then head outdoors and test it out. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video and I'll see you in the end of it in order to give you my conclusion. So overall I can tell you that I expected to be disappointed with the red hair but actually I was surprised and it performed quite well. The thing that I was impressed the most was the flight time. I got almost 6 minutes of flight time using a 1300 mAh 4S battery and also the VTX didn't suck. I didn't get too far with this quadcopter since the flashed version of the FRX Sky XM Plus receiver is not flashed with the latest version and it doesn't support RSSI. So I recommend that if you get this version with the FRX Sky XM Plus receiver to flash the latest version and then you'll be able to display the RSSI on the OSD, which is pretty important. 
In addition, the location of the antenna is a little bit problematic and probably you're going to break the connector of the antenna on the first crash. Luckily, I didn't crash this quadcopter. So what I recommend to do is to remove this connector and use an AM6 antenna such as the Foxeer Lollipop. So you'll have to remove the connector and just place it in the back like that and then it's going to be much more protected. Another thing that you need to take into consideration is that this camera kind of sucks and you will need to replace it with a better camera. And the problem is that this frame does not provide any protection for the camera. So maybe a possible solution is to get a micro camera and then to put it inside an adapter and then it's going to be better secured inside the space over here. Finally, my biggest issue regarding this quadcopter is its price. It is priced at $250 for the Bind and Fly version, which is pretty expensive considering the parts that you're getting. The motors cost about $10 each, the stack costs around $100, so this is $140. Adding the XM Plus receiver gets us to about $150. This camera may be worth $10, so it's $160. And if you add the frame and all the other parts, probably you're going to get to around $180, maybe $190. So you pay about $60 extra for getting an assembled quadcopter. And this is not such a good deal. Even though I am going to include a coupon that is going to reduce the price to $230, I still think that if you're in the market for a bind and fly quadcopter, you should check out the Emax Hawk 5 or the 6 inch version. And I think it's going to give you a little bit better value for money. And another option is the Gepper C Mark II, which even though is not a racing quadcopter and this is a freestyle quadcopter, I still think that it's going to provide you with a better value for money priced at $250, it costs the same as this one without the coupon. So I think that this is something that you need to consider as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you find it useful. Of course, if you have any questions about this quadcopter, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.